Today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, the solo break. What to do, or more specifically, what not to do. So today, I'm gonna give you guys five really easy tips to help you negotiate the solo break. All right, let's get to it. If I was gonna say one thing to help you more than anything during any kind of solo break, whether it's one bar, two bars, or four bars, it's this. Do not mess up the time. You got to keep the tempo steady, but just don't screw it up. It's so much more important that you don't screw it up than it is that you actually do something cool. All right, so I got this little funk thing that I've been using recently. It's got a one bar solo break. Doesn't matter if it's one bar, two bars, or four bars. Doesn't matter. These tips are going to work over everything. Okay, so number five, don't do anything. Just lay out. Sometimes it's more intense to just have that space than it is to actually do anything at all. This might seem like a cop out, but really it's not. It can be a very effective way of just changing things up a little bit, especially if you've been getting weird during that break. Okay, number four, keep it simple. You can just play a simple pattern with a nice crescendo that can actually build into when the time comes back in. Let me give you an example. Number three, an exotic mode. Maybe you've had this really exotic scale or sound that you've been working on and you don't really know how to use it. A solo break is an excellent time to really throw in this exotic mode that doesn't really fit, but kind of fits, all right? So here's an example. If you guys want to know what that lick is, I'm just going to write that out real quick. It's basically like a blue scale mixed with a harmonic minor scale. So uh, let me just say it in C. It's actually in, in B flat, but so we just got C, D, E flat, F sharp, G, A flat, B, C. Just play it two octaves. <laughs> It just sounds like it's all over the place. Okay, number two. It's not customary for rappers to cover someone else's rap song. Usually when it's done, there's a very, very deliberate attempt at paying tribute to a very specific rapper. It's just, it's not a very casual thing to do ever. It's, it's never really done like this. And when it comes to playing solo breaks is a very similar kind of thing where you don't generally play somebody else's really popular solo break. Like, for instance, Charlie Parker's solo break. I mean, we all learn it, but when it comes time to actually do it, you usually just do your own thing. You know, what usually happens is the arranger will just write out something like that for a sax solely section or for whatever instrument is being pay tribute to. Okay, but with that idea in mind of covering something, sometimes it's really hip to do like a quote of a famous melody during a solo break. I think uh, <laughs> Saxo Logic does the Mario Kart thing and it sounds awesome. But um, I want to play one for you guys. And if you know what it is, list it in the comments and see if, uh, see if you recognize this one. All right. The 
number one coolest thing that I think you can do over a solo break is just some really high altissimo note with a whole lot of stank on it. Just a high multiphonic altissimo note over a solo break, something like this. Now, obviously, you can mix and match all those little things that I said together, like doing an altissimo break with a really simple crescendo and a very, very steady rhythm, mixing up a very simple type of fast pattern that you can play. But the most important thing to remember, ladies and gentlemen, do not screw up the time. Your band will never forgive you. And then... Next time a solo break comes, you're going to hear the drummer go. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good sign that they don't trust you anymore to just play over that complete silence and keep everything together. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, by the way, I do have my Altissimo book for tenor sax available as a digital purchase. I'll put a link down in the description, ladies and gentlemen. Richie Rich's dad, Richard Rich, is the richest fictional character of all time. This man engineered a living android, like Vision, like Lieutenant Commander Data. And you know what the baddest flex is? It's his maid. You didn't hear me. This man created a living Android with the processing power of Lieutenant Commander Data, and he uses it to mop his damn floors. <laughs> okay, thanks for tuning in. That's all I got for you. See ya.